In this video, we're going to look at one of the most important types of factoring that we're going to see as we continue to study algebra, and that's factoring trinomials. Writing a trinomial as a product. Now, these products are generally going to be the result of a reverse FOIL process. If you remember FOIL, we had two binomials, and we would multiply the two binomials together. We're going to look at the binomials a plus b times c plus d to establish a pattern that we will use with a little critical thinking in order to identify how to factor these trinomials. You recall with FOIL, we would start by multiplying the first term times the first term to get a c. In other words, the first term of our solution came from the first terms in the binomial. The first terms would multiply, of the problem, would multiply to the first term of the solution. Then we would do a times d. I'm going to use a dotted line. I'm going to come back to this. a times d and get a d. And then we would use b times c and get b c. I'm going to come back to that. And then we would finish by doing b times d at the end. In other words, the last term times the last term in the problem would multiply to the last term in the solution. So first multiplies to first, last multiplies to last. Now, I skipped a few. I want to come back to that. We would also would have multiplied a times d here in the middle and b times c. And generally, we found those were often like terms that we could combine together. Those came from the outside and inside of FOIL. And what those will do is those will add to the middle term of the solution. So what we're going to do is do some guess and check. Using this pattern to identify what binomials were multiplied together to give us the trinomial in the problem. So if we have the trinomial 3x squared plus 11x plus 10, we're asked to factor it. That means there are some binomials that were multiplied together, which gave us 3x squared plus 11x plus 10. Well, we know that the first term times the first term has to equal the first term. Move this down. I'm going to run out of space. So what we'll do is we'll look at 3x squared, and we'll ask ourselves if two things were multiplied together to give us 3x squared, what could those have been? Well, the only way to get 3 is 3 times 1. And to get x squared, it must have been x times x. And we don't really have to write 1x. So what you'll see is my first times first equals the first. 3x times x equals 3x squared. Also, we know the last term times the last term has to equal the last term. What can we multiply together to end up with 10? Well, 5 times 2 equals 10. I'm going to clear out these arrows as I keep talking. And so now we've made the first times first equal the first, the last times the last equals the last. What we want to check to make sure happens is that the outside terms and the inside terms are going to add to the middle. Outside and inside have to add to the middle. So on the outside, 3x times 2, that's 6x. On the inside, 5x times 5 times x is 5x. Can we use those to add to 11x? We sure can. We can do it if the 6x is positive and the 5x is positive. So if the 6x is positive and the 5x is positive, I want the term with the 5 to be positive, the term with the 6 to be positive. We have now factored our expression. It factors to 3x plus 5 times x plus 2. Again, we can check our answer if we were to FOIL it out. 3x times x is 3x squared. 3x times 2 is 6x. 
5 times x is 5x, and 5 times 2 is 10. And you see these middle terms now are combined to give us the middle term 11x, and now it does match the original problem. So if you're ever not sure, just multiply it out to check your work. Let's try another one. Here we're asked to find, uh, 12x squared plus 16x minus 3. Again, we're hoping it factors to something nice. We'll look first at the first term. First times first has to equal the first, 12x squared. We have a couple choices with 12x squared. It could be maybe 3x times 4x. That multiplies to 12x squared. Let's see if that works. Looking at the last term, we know that the last times the last has to equal negative 3. Well, let's not worry about the negative yet. It could be 3 times 1, but I want to look at something here. Notice inside this binomial, 3x times 3, there's a GCF in there, right? They're both divisible by 3. We should never have a GCF in a binomial when we're factoring. So what I want to do is I'm going to switch these. We're going to put the 1 and 3. There we go. So let's see if this can be used to give us the 16x in the middle. On the outside, 3x times 3 is 9x. On the inside, 4x times 1 is 4x. Can we use that to get 16? Not really, 9 plus 4 is 13. That's no good. There's really no other way to multiply to negative 3, so we throw that out. I said this is going to be a little bit of guess and check. Let's try another option. We said at the beginning we wanted to multiply to 12x squared. We tried 3x and 4x, but that's not the only way to get 12x squared. What else works? We could use 6x times 2x, another option to consider. So let's see if that works. I used the wrong color. But again, 6x times 2x, that multiplies to 12x squared. Last times last has to equal 3. We could try 3 times 1. But again, you notice there's a GCF in there. Oh, can't have that. So maybe the 3 and 1 are backwards. Let's switch them. If this will delete. There it goes. So we'll put the 1 on the right and the 3 on the left. Let's see if this can give us the 16x squared we want. On the outside, 6 times 3 is 18x. On the inside, 1 times 2x is 2x. We can get the 16x in the middle we want if the 2x were negative. I said signs are very important here. 18x minus 2x does equal the positive 16x. So the minus 2x, we want the 1 to be negative, so it's negative 1 times 2 gives us negative 2. And on the outside, a positive, so we end up with 6x times positive 3 is positive 18. And now, we have factored our trinomial, 6x minus 1 times 2x plus 3. This process does require you to be comfortable knowing your multiplication facts. It also does require some guess and check. If this combination doesn't work, is there something else that multiplied to 12? Maybe we need to switch the order. We had our 1 and 3 backwards, so we switched them. There's a little guess and check, a little critical thinking, and a lot of practice. But solving these trinomials now successfully will pay dividends as you continue studying your algebra.